you know, all this is, you know, is the fact that we're throwing a speed worm out here in the grass and vegetation down south in Louisiana. You know, the speed worm setup, you know, is a pretty easy deal. You know, I got a five aught super line gamakatsu hook, 25 pound sun line, sniper fluorocarbon, and then, uh, you know, a little 16th ounce bullet weights tungsten sinker with a freedom peg. But this is something you're gonna wanna throw on a big rod. You know, this is a 7.6 Lithium Pro Denali. You know, like I said, 25 pound Sunline FC Sniper, and then a high speed gear ratio reel. You know, this is Johnny Morse Platinum, but you want one that you can definitely take some line up quick just for the fact that uh, a lot of times you're making long casts and stuff and the fish grab it and swim to the side. You know, you keep them out of that vegetation and everything, but something you can lean on them with. speed worm fish right there. Well, they don't come any prettier than that, you know. Mm. Mm. You know, this is probably couldn't be any simpler setup. Just a Zoom Magnum speed worm and a little 16th ounce bullet weights tungsten sinker, you know, 5 odd EWG super line, you know, and a nice Florida strain largemouth. Good looking fish right there, a lot of color to him. When you rig this back up, you definitely wanna make it as streamlined as possible because the fact that we're coming through vegetation and everything, you know, but what I like to do is take and push that sinker, I mean, right to it. I want it tight to it. So when you're coming over pad stems and vegetation, it doesn't hesitate, it comes over real natural and everything. Freedom's got a brand new little bobber stop here that we've been using. And you can see there, it's kind of a torpedo looking bobber stop. And what that does is actually slides right down inside that sinker. It actually holds it up there, you know, because it's kind of pegged it. But the nice thing about that is everything on this rig right here is streamlined, you know, going right through the water, nice and neat, nice and crisp, looks real natural. You know, even the finest hair vegetation, you know, so keep that in mind, just those little simple things really make your day a lot better and get you a lot more bites. You know, but here, don't be afraid to mix up your retrieve, you know, we're just winding it a few times and then killing the bait, giving the fish a chance to react you know we're in the south part of Louisiana you can see today it's cloudy you know a lot of these fish are Florida strain and as the sun comes out later on today you can probably get more aggressive with this worm and get them to bite it constantly moving but here this morning you know we're trying to feed it to them just a little bit so that way they don't uh, you know they don't just have it buzzing over their head and not wanting to bite it You know, the best thing about this worm that I really like is, you know, this is considered a keeper down in the south, you know, without any trouble and a lot of bass tournaments. You know, this worm's got a good profile to where it'll catch you limit fillers and it'll catch you a 10 pounder without breaking a sweat. So, you know, it's a real, real versatile worm, you know, to where uh, you can, you can feel confident that you're going to get, you know, the right kind of bites and a good many bites in the same, same type tournament deal. Tell you what, one thing that's probably a misconception about this type of technique, you know, is that maybe people just think of like dragging a worm old school. And uh, this technique here is not even anywhere remotely close to that. You know, this is a, a power fishing technique, you know, and you can do it with braid or you can do it with fluorocarbon, you know, whichever you choose and which application, you know. And, uh, you know, that worm's a, a nice meaty worm. It's got a lot of bulk to it. You can use it in gin clear water because it really doesn't move much other than the cutter tail here. Or you can use it in tannic water. It puts off enough bulk to where they can still see it. You know, you can take and throw it right down the edge of this line and just wind it real slow, you know, drag it around, stop and go. Or you can throw it right up there on top of that stuff and just bring it you know, full send, bubbling on top, and really getting a lot, a lot of different variations, you know, in one technique. You know, we're on a brand new lake today in South Louisiana that I've never been to, and the thing that probably stands out to me more than anything is the fact that I can get on that Garmin Troll motor and just cover water, and whatever I come to, throw it around and change my application of depth in different ways without having to change my whole setup because I don't want to have a whole bunch of different Denali rods on the deck 
And so well, that's something that really just stands out to me about this whole concept. But you know, your rod, you, you, you want to have a good power rod. I mean, you can see there that rod does not have a lot of bend after about 30, 35%, you know, but it's got a nice tip to where you can kind of wheel this worm around and make a good long cast. But yet, if you got him in this vegetation, you've got a lot of rod from here to here, that's definitely going to be able to pull him out of the vegetation, especially a big fish, keep his head up, that kind of deal. And then a high gear ratio reel, you know, is about a must, something in that eight range. That way uh, you can just go ahead and cover more water, wine less, not wear yourself out. But then when you do get a fish out here in some vegetation, you can keep him coming your way. But, you know, don't get misled by the fact that old school worm dragging is something that uh, you can only do, you know, out deep or whatever it might be. Now you can change your worm and do it that way. But in this application, you know, it's kind of a, it's kind of a meat and potatoes kind of deal that you can really get down and dirty with them and cover a lot of water and catch a big bag of fish. You can see there, when you hit those open holes and try and come through there, you know, that tail really, really gets to kicking and splashing water, you know, and looks really, really good. You know, a fish that's in one of them holes, he doesn't have but just a second to bite that bait. I mean, just a second. And so it's kind of a reaction style bait that you can get them to react to, you know, that makes it really, really convenient for you because you're trying to go fast too. And then they've got to make up their mind 100% to eat right then, right now. And so... In pressured situations, you can get them to react to it a lot better. But then if you get in something like this where this Y comes right here together, you can kind of see it. You know, you can slow it down and just throw it right down the gut and just kind of pulse it along, wind it three or four times. These little canals we're in are four or five foot deep in the middle and then really shallow on the sides. And so it just gives you a lot of variation to where you don't have to pick up a different rod, you know, and so that makes it really, really nice cover a lot of water and not have a bunch of stuff on your deck and then keeps me somebody like me from bending over a whole bunch you know makes it easier on the fishermen at the end of a 10 12 hour day you got it old boy big enough it's bigger come on old girl Oh, humpback. That's a nice one.